welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you are here. We are on episode three of season two, and we're real excited to have with us on our Turn the Table series, Andy. You know Andy. So excited. And, and of course, Dan <laughs> Hi. is here with us. And we're uh, going to turn the tables on Andy today. She's been part yes. of our team I'm since actually, the inset. I'm not as nervous as I thought I was going to be. That's because we haven't started asking questions yet. That's true. Okay, yeah. that's true. So, Let's give it a yeah. give it a couple minutes. Pump the brakes there. <laughs> We're gonna make it real awkward real fast. <laughs> we'll get the spotlight. But most people know Andy is Pastor Ned's daughter. She's been part of. She's on our ministry team. Um, you run our website and photography team. Yeah, how many hats do, do you wear? A lot of things. Um, tons of administrative stuff behind. I like the hats. <laughs> and yeah, you always a look lot good of things. Hats too. A lot of things. So. Uh, but you've been part of this podcast team since the very beginning. Yes. So yes. we are glad to turn the tables and kind of hear a little bit more of your story, get an understanding of who you are, because people know you, but they who don't am really, I? They don't really know <laughs> who you. am I? Wow. I'm right? going to go deep here. We only got a half hour, so I need you to All right, all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> that's right. That's great. I'm not going to awkward. Thank you. <laughs> There's a couple questions I have. If, okay, if, yeah. Can, is that okay if we start? I'm, we've, I'm more nervous for you to ask me questions, but you go ahead. You, you, you go ahead. It's... Like we've touched on it slightly, like the PK, which is the pastor's kid experience. Yes. And I'm always baffled by it because as I'm so foreign to it. So I was kind of hoping you could just, you know. So it's funny. I mean, I've been a PK my entire life. Um, my parents were pastors at a church in Fort Worth. And then life happens. And my mom married Justin in 2008. That's and Pastor so Justin for Pastor all you Pastor Justin, yes, yeah. sorry. And then I became a PK. <laughs> I became a PK again. So there was some years where I wasn't, but I I mean I grew up in the church. I've always had parents who were in church and so it is it it's all I know, but it's not I mean people when I would tell people, yeah, I'm a pastor's kid, they would think it was funny because I did not act like a pastor's kid. But hmm. yeah, it's it's been interesting. I mean, is it is it tough being a pastor's kid? Is there a different expectation level because you are a PK? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, when I was younger, I kind of had a different perspective about it. I didn't understand, like, why everyone, like, I felt like I was kind of sharing my parents with the congregation of people, and I didn't understand it as much. Now I appreciate it a little more because I'm, like my mom's pastoral prayers like have covered me my entire life, which is huge, which I didn't appreciate. I didn't, I didn't care as much growing up, but now I'm like, I'm in a great position to have these like very powerful, wise leaders as my parents. Mm -hmm. So I definitely appreciate it now a lot more than I did when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, from your vantage point as uh, living in the house with pastors and seeing the behind behind the scenes yeah. or their normal life, um, has that changed your perspective of the local church? Or, oh, for sure. And what is that like? Because, I mean, my I know what my parents go through and what we've put them through. <laughs> and <laughs> just they are real people. They're, they experience a lot of real life stuff that a lot of people don't understand and they have the grace for that which is crazy i mean it's amazing they're very patient oh and gosh. yeah it, it is interesting seeing and i appreciate that too because you never know like just because someone's in a leadership position i feel like i've said this too like just because someone's a leader doesn't mean they don't experience real life problems um and even problems that you wouldn't think a pastor would have to go through but they do and they do it with a lot of grace that I don't, I, I don't under, it is an anointing because I don't understand it. Like how they like I'm mad can go them. through that kind like, of stuff. You know what I mean? Like I get like mad for them. Half the yeah. Time. You hear about it, like, how dare you? You know what I mean? Like you yeah, just get right. weirdly like protective. Cause like, how right. are you dealing with that? Yeah. But they do it and it's all, it's, it is an anointing. They are able to do it. And this might be a weird question, but did it negatively or positively impact your faith when you see church through that kind of lens, like so many people get to just receive church. Yeah. You get to go to church, be in the seats, receive, and they kind of have a different, where you have more of a, I don't want to say a corporate perspective, because that's not the right word, but behind the scenes. Because sometimes church is not pretty. I mean, it is <laughs> not, it's not pretty. And it kind of just depends. I try to, I try to not look at it so much from 
behind the scenes because I also work here too. So it's, I get like behind, behind the scenes and I, I don't want that to stop me from receiving mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. so like on a Sunday morning, that's not necessarily like my stepdad preaching to me. It's your pastor, my pastor. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you kind of shift your perspective and then it doesn't, it doesn't like ruin the show. If that makes sense. You know, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't. Well, it's easy when you're busy to be busy. Yeah. And like, mm -hmm. it's hard to receive when you're focused on photography. You're right. focused on a lot right. of like, and that's what I kind of mean. Like well, you, if, there's if a lot you, of responsibility. You have to like know for yourself. Like if I start questioning things or I start slipping, I'm like, okay, I need to sit in a service and not deal with this stuff or this stuff. And mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of us are yeah. like that too, though, I agree. that are doing stuff on Sunday mornings every Sunday morning yeah. and we have a lot on our plate and it is like, it takes a lot to run a church. And if you get lost in that, then it could hurt your, sure. your walk. And I don't want to, I don't want to get that sure. way. You know, I want to be able to still receive on a Sunday morning. And if I start feeling, and I can tell like by my mood, how I'm talking to people, <laughs> all of these things, like by my attitude. And we're if going I, to say something about that. Yeah, so I'm glad you're bringing listen, it up. I'm it's also really pregnant. Nice. So it, <laughs> comes out extra. And so when I start feeling that way, I'm like, okay, take a step back. This right. is still church. You still have to get in that mindset and yeah. receive. For sure. What's, what's some of the favorite things that you've done, whether it's been behind the scenes or like what part is your favorite part to play in the church? Cause you've done so many different things and you're, you have your hands in lots of different areas. And since your vantage point is so broad, do you have a favorite? I mean, I've never like designed a website before, and I hope y'all like the website. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> I it's hope really you good. like I'm it. A, I'm a fan. I, yeah, <laughs> you did an you. excellent job. I've never done that before, so that was that was good learning that for me, and I can take that anywhere also, which I appreciate that. Like, the church has given me an opportunity to learn a lot of things that I normally mm -hmm. wouldn't have learned. I mean, my passion is not necessarily building websites, but now I have the knowledge to do it that I can take anywhere. So I, I appreciate that. Well, I thought you knocked the website out of the park. Gee, thanks. Yeah. So good job on that. <laughs> um, you did mention though, that you, like you were in a pastor's household and then you weren't for a while and then you were, uh, what all happened? So that part of your life. <laughs> well, I, I, I definitely, <laughs> such a, such a, like, well, you know, <laughs> let me tell you, I, I was actively running from God and from church, um, pretty much all throughout high school. I, I would use the phrase, which is, this is so dumb. Like, I don't know if I believe in God, but like, I believe in a higher power. Like I just <laughs> so dumb. Not and religious, I'm spiritual. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was not living a lifestyle that was good or productive at all. And that was on me. I mean, I, my mom would try to get me to come to church here and I hated coming. I didn't want to do it. Um, I didn't, you know, and I said this to you earlier, like I didn't hold on to what I had learned as a kid because I experienced church as a kid. Mm -hmm. I went to church camps. I was filled with the Holy Spirit, all the things, right? I didn't hold on to them because, you know, life happens and you, you give into peer pressure or you start hanging out with the wrong people and you just kind of slow fade. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And you, before you even realize it, you're in this place where you're just like, wow, I am not, I am not living a good life at all. And so I was just actively running from church and I hated coming here. I didn't think people understood me like, woe is me, just that kind of mentality. You know what I mean? And so it, it got, it got a hold of me. I was, you know, I, right before I had Addie, so I had Addie at 18 years old. I got pregnant at 18. And before that I was, struggling a lot with, you know, drugs and self-image issues and a severe eating disorder and just all of these things that were just attacking me physically and mentally. And then I get pregnant and I have Addie who, you know, I didn't live a Christian life even a couple of years after I had her, but I wasn't, you know, I was like in this 
like in between. Mm-hmm. You know, I still wasn't going to church, but I wasn't doing drugs anymore. So I guess that's okay. Take a W. So <laughs> I was, I was in this weird in between. And then, you know, you come to a point where you just like, you get so tired of living that life. And I was living in Austin. I had a good job. Addie was happy. Like we were, we were living an okay life, but it wasn't the life that God had for us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I, I specifically, I remember this so clearly. I was sitting in my apartment and I was just so tired. Like I knew something was missing. It wasn't that my life was bad or that I was necessarily doing anything bad, but I wasn't doing anything good either. Mm -hmm. And there was something that was missing in my life. And so I texted my mom and I said, I'm getting rid of the apartment and we're moving home. And she said, all right, come home. And that was the end of it. Like so easy. I was just able to come home and then get back into church. And I I guess that, that was 2017 or 2018. And then things just got better from there. I mean, it it is amazing how whenever you submit to like the call of God and you do what he's, what he has for Mm -hmm. you, like it's so much better than what you have thought for yourself. Like for sure. It's weird when we're so against that. Our flesh is like, I don't want to be in obedience. That sounds awful, but you're like, it's the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I'm saying is even if, you know, my life wasn't necessarily bad after I had Addie, I mean, I had to grow up really fast and, you know, I was 19 years old. That's, that's crazy. That's so young. And she made me want to stop doing what I was doing, which is great. So good. Love that. But I still wasn't living my best. And can you really live your best if you're not living the way God, like doing the things that God has for you? Like that was my plan. My plan was okay, yes. but it, his plan is like <laughs> even better. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Is it in that season? We'll call it a season because I know <laughs> Pastor Eric loves that word. <laughs> um, the seasons you were in. Yeah. <clears throat> when you say you were going, was it a was it a conscious decision? Like I just don't want to be involved in church, or was it I don't want a relationship with God? I don't want to be involved in church. Okay. I, you know, I would still like occasionally read my Bible or like post a scripture on Facebook or something like that. You know what I mean? Like oh it wasn't gosh. like, still I was still like, you know, kind yeah. of like, oh, that's good, but not fully. It's not for me. In it. Yeah. It wasn't, it just wasn't for, nothing was grabbing me. Mm-hmm. And that's also, I wasn't like there was a wall up, you know what I mean? And I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if that's just like past hurt or whatever it is, but there was a wall up to where I was like, I don't want to fully like submit because what if I do want to go out to a bar? What if I do want to do this? Or what if Mm -hmm. I do, you know, I don't want to have to, I don't want to give everything because what if, Right. I still want to go back yeah. event mm-hmm. at some point. You know what I mean? Oh, yes. And you, you you do that, like, you don't even realize you're doing that. But right. that's what that was. You start really hardening your heart to it. Right. Yeah. You're like, ah, yeah. make exceptions what my behavior is. And, like, I'm still a good person, right? Yeah. And, right. I mean, there's, I'm, I'm sorry, there's people in the church that are still doing that. And mm-hmm. it's, my life has just been so much better after just giving it up. Because it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it when you have kids or when you want a family or when you eventually want to like find someone, you know, it's just right. all that stuff is not, it's not worth it. It's only bringing you down. Right. There's no profit to it. No, it. not at all. Um, did you see changes in Addie? Oh yeah. So she, uh, she loves coming to church. She loves church and it's not just the people, like it's not just her friends. Like she genuinely loves coming to church and you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll walk in the kids and well now preteens. Oh my gosh. And (laughs) it blows my mind, but I'll see her and just how she, like she knows God and she loves God. And just, I mean, she obviously is a kid and still like has things that she struggles with, but like she prays for herself every day. Like she, she's actively seeking God and it's, it's inspiring for a mom. Like, I don't know if that's, I mean, my mom too, I mean, has put a lot on her too, like 
you're going to pray. You're going to do this. You, you know, like, <laughs> like she's like, she's taught her not like said yeah. you're going to, but she's taught no, her no, like, I this is it. how yeah. you pray. And this is how you <clears throat> look like, and she just, she holds on to it. So, and I want her to keep that because I don't want her to experience the things that I've experienced, but she loves, she just loves God so much. And it is so inspiring to see like your child is this inspiration to you. Mm. It is, it is so true. Yeah. I see it a lot with Lucas as he grows. Yeah. I'm like, you, you have this precious little relationship with yes. God. Yes. Like these kids like, are doing it better than yeah. we are sometimes. Yeah. It's true. It's really, <laughs> it's it true. It really blesses you as a parent to be like, oh, you, you asked to pray for your friend at school. Yeah. Like, I'm like that boldness. It's incredible to yeah. see them step into that. I love stuff. it. I love it. If yeah. you want to see more of it, you can join our youth team. <laughs> <laughs> here in of faith. Yeah. No, the get, kids are great. You showed, teach we, in there. I, yeah. I teach that that age, and it's and it, you're not wrong. It's yeah. awesome to see some kids at that level really step in to like more. And I didn't teach her that. Nope. That was not me. I I think we're that pretty good at me. teaching. That wasn't me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's cra- and <clears throat> really, the truth be told, you can really see the the kids that are getting at home mm-hmm. when they see an authentic relationship with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord, with that mm-hmm. they. they they come different. Yeah. Like their experience in youth is so much more significant and profound because for them, it's just another day. It's It's, it's not a, I have to put on a mask or I'm at Sunday school or any of that kind of stuff. It's like, this is how I, you walk it out. This is life. Exactly. And it's really amazing to see that. Yeah. There are some powerful, powerful kids in our, in our church, in our community. And Yeah. yeah, Addie was one of them. She was always like, just had a sincere, authentic, desire yeah to know him more which is amazing it is truly yes. amazing i really love the way carol king said it in her episode she's like if the altar is at home mm. then then <clears throat> church is an addition yes. church, yeah church is the bonus it's the icing on the cake for those kids yeah and I mean, we see that with addy for sure and i i i feel like we were doing that at home here and there but it's just gotten so much better especially since like bringing ryan into the picture yeah, yeah. It's amazing what like a full and healthy house family. looks like, a yeah. family looks like. And I didn't realize that she probably, like she appreciates it more than I thought she was going to. And she grabs hold of it more. Like it is just amazing what a healthy home looks like. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's almost like there was a design. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Like a God design. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like yeah. It's, it is crazy. It's, it, well... So he's not here, unfortunately. We love your husband. He's yeah, he's he's yeah. an amazing yeah, man. Very, like I, every time I've had the opportunity to to spend time with him, he's always been. He's just a real. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's great. You did good there. Way to go. Thanks. Good job. Thanks yeah. so much. Um, Thanks. But how has that changed in terms of now your your position and view of the church now in terms of like what you're doing now being in a Listen, like a complete family? I never thought I was going to get married. I even had church. conversations with God where I was like, if I'm meant to be a single mother for the rest of my life that's fine. Like I, I was, I totally did not think I was ever going to get married. I didn't think I was going to have kids, but you know, it happens. Um, <laughs> but I, already out of the barn, yeah, so. but I yeah. never <laughs> thought I was going to get married and I was just so fine, like settling, like, Oh, I'll date or whatever, whatever. But like, that's what I'm saying. God has this plan. And when I was here, in 20 I don't I don't I don't know what year but someone spoke over me and said God is going to give you back all the years that the devil took from you Mm -hmm. and fully it it, it's happened like there's just been this like speed in my life where like Ryan came in and I just knew because of how he treated me and how he just loved on Addie Mm -hmm. and you know like so we we were dating maybe a month and he started asking about her diabetes and he did all of this research and just learned all this stuff to where I was like, well, I didn't even know that. Like, and it was wow. so impressive to me. And I was like, yep, this is the person I'm keeper. going to marry. I know, I know yeah, I'm going to marry him, good guy. but I never thought I was ever going to get married. And so I met this person who, first of all, he's the first person I have ever dated who went to church and had a relationship with God, which is crazy, but he, <laughs> that's crazy that you say that. You're I like, oh, know. This is the first time. That's crazy. Like, 
they weren't in this other listen just cult. don't i'm sorry just don't waste your time if they don't love god right. just don't waste your time because you guys, it really is a waste that? of time like when it's like when you're unevenly yoked it is significant it really is and you don't realize it until it's you have it to matters. make concessions yes right. yeah. so it, it really has just changed how i view life because i was always this like well, I'm a strong, independent woman, which I am a strong, independent woman, but I have somebody who takes care of me and who I take care of them. I never thought I would be doing someone's laundry, but I take pride in that now. Like that's, that's you use something. fabric softener? <laughs> What's the... I'm so glad my husband's not here because he would have some things to say. Well, then why is it sitting on the chair for three days? Anyways. <laughs> but, never mind. Never mind. But I still do it. Ignore um, the files in the corner. Right? Yeah. But I Sorry, honestly, I it, honestly, I have... I've never seen the goodness of God more than I have being a mom and a wife. That's really good. Yeah. That kind of leads to our signature question. Oh my gosh. So I'm so, I'm really <gasps> looking forward to this part of this podcast because I got recently put to the ringer and you, you've been on every one of these answers. We've all been on, right. we've, yeah, heard we've heard every heard person in the, the church answers. respond and they're such good ones. Well, I have no idea what I'm going to say. So go ahead and ask it and let me think a second. Well, part of the fabric is the making winners in life. That's mm-hmm. what we do as a church, as a body, as people. That's what you've done in the life of your daughter and your husband and the life that you live now. I mean, you are a walking testament of my, what being a winner is. So now, not you, then. Now. <laughs> now. Yeah. Now. I mean, and it, in, <laughs> it's in, true. It is true. And that's why we love you so much. Uh, <laughs> I got really sweaty. Uh, I don't know what don't I'm going to say. It's, but what does that mean? I mean, it means something to all of us. And it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. Making a winner. Being a winner. I am a winner. I think being a winner in life is letting go of who you were and being who God has called you to be. I... I always thought I had the perfect plan for my life. I had, I I knew what I was going to do. I had all of these, you know, plans that I thought were great, but it was nothing compared to the plan that God had for me. If I would have seen myself, I mean, even five years ago, 10 years ago, I never thought I would be where I am today. And I think when you submit to the call of God and you submit to what he has for you, you will win. It's inevitable. You will win, and it'll, it will be better than anything you could have thought. That's one of the best answers we've had. Well, I mean, thanks. I think that was very good. <laughs> yeah. What's that? So much. It reminds me of that scripture, and I'm so bad at this game called, I don't know where it is in the Bible, but I know <laughs> it's there. Verse, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, uh, but we're like, you know, you make, you say, I'm going to go to this city or that city, and you just don't know what tomorrow brings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to make your own decisions. It seems like you're in that kind of phase, but then once you said, all right, Lord, like tomorrow's your day. Today's Jesus, your take day. the yeah. wheel. Take, mm-hmm. There it is. You know what I mean, <laughs> we all know that scripture. Uh, <laughs> everyone knows that one. You know, uh, but like I think that's like I I identify with that a lot. Yeah. Like when you come from a strong, independent perspective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to say. All right, Lord. Clearly, my yeah, plans are not as sure. good as yours. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I know, shockingly. I know. It's so odds? crazy. Why am I surprised yeah, at this? Weird, yeah. Weird. You know. But when you finally do let go, it's an amazing. Like it. There's so much fear to it sometimes, I think, because you, you, you like what you know, you want to hold on to it. But the moment you really, truly say, all right, Lord, like, I trust you. Yeah. I trust my finances, with my life, who my friends but are, like I all said, those things. But like I said, you might not, you might think your life is fine, and it might be. Like, you might be, I, I had a great job, I was making good money, living a great life. But... God has even better. Yeah. So yeah. why not? Why not just? Why not get the? Better? Why not just get the better? Yeah. Why <laughs> show? It's yeah. It's yeah. so true. Oh, good stuff. That yeah, pretty great. good. That was a good answer. Woo! Good you were worried about it though. <sighs> I was a little bit. Way to nail it. Yeah. <clears throat> Nailed it. Thanks. Well, this was super fun. Yeah. Did you have fun? Yeah, I had was so it much fun. fun. It was yes. Are you ready to be on the other side of the? I'm ready. Again? It's so much more to fun host again. Time. Yeah, way I'm better so to ready. Host, so you guys know. Um, well, we just want to take a moment and say thank you so much for for listening. Yeah. If you're listening, for watching. If you're watching, because we are on YouTube now, Woo! which is like again, this is crazy. This is such a ah, uh, the Lord's doing amazing so stuff. So much fun. But we want to say thank you for tuning in. Uh, we hope we get to see you next Friday on another episode of Winning Conversations, where we are turning the tables yet again. Again, right? yes. Oh my gosh, this is fun. Uh, we, we are so happy that you're here. We thank you and we hope to see you next Friday. Bye.